Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this organic chemistry video deals with understanding carbocations, which are intermediates in the SN1 mechanism. Here's a view of a typical generic carbocation. In the middle is the central carbon that bears the positive charge. It's sp2 hybridized and in this particular example there are three carbon groups that are attached. When drawn in a traditional structure type drawing it would look like this. In a side view, with adding p orbitals, you can see the geometry of the carbocation a little bit better. The central carbon atom is here with the positive charge, still sp2 hybridized, but in this orientation we're able to see the p orbitals a bit better. So each of these is half a lobe of a p orbital. This carbon group is on a wedge, that carbon group is on a dash, and this carbon group would be in the plane. If this were drawn in a traditional structure type drawing, it would look like this, where the r group here is the wedged group, we have the dashed group, and we have the in-plane r group. Carbocations are unstable and reactive. Carbon lacks an octet, and that's the primary reason for their reactivity. They're also very electron poor, and they're strong electrophiles. In other words, electron-rich species like to come in and react with the carbocation carbon. The carbon is sp2 hybridized, and it has an empty p orbital, and also has trigonal planar geometry. That means that we get bond angles of 120 degrees, which is shown over here. The carbocation is planar in the vicinity of the carbocation carbon, and that'll become important when we look at reaction mechanisms for the SN1 reaction in a little bit. Carbocations are classified according to their substitution, and that also impacts their stability. Here's a list of four different kinds of carbocations with different substitution states. The first type of carbocation is the methyl carbocation. It's characterized by having no R groups attached, only hydrogens. Adding one R group to the carbocation makes it a primary carbocation. Secondary carbocations have two R groups attached to the central carbocation carbon, and tertiary carbocations have three carbon groups attached to the carbocation carbon. Stability goes from less substituted and less stable to more substituted and more stable. The reason is, is that each R group contributes a bit of electron density to the electron-poor carbocation carbon, helping to stabilize it a little bit. The R group contributes a bit of electron density to help stabilize the carbon, hence primary carbocations are a bit more stable than methyl. With a secondary carbocation, there are two of these stabilizing interactions, and with a tertiary carbocation, there are three. That explains why tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, which are more stable than primary, which are more stable than methyl. In addition to substitution, resonance can also stabilize carbocations. Here's an example to show that. Compare the two carbocations here. The one on the right has a resonance structure, and we can see that if we shift the electrons over this way, share them differently, that gives a resonance delocalized structure where the carbocation is in a different spot. This resonance delocalization of charge is a stabilizing influence and that makes the carbocation on the right more stable, while the carbocation on the left has a localized positive charge. The charge here on that carbon is stuck in one spot and that's a less stable situation. So look for resonance when you're trying to consider the stability of a carbocation. 